Welcome to the DSS Locker Room Podcast. Mark is back with us this week. We're looking at the at the club action over the weekend, Mark. We had a busy weekend of club action, some brilliant games. Uh, I suppose starting with Saturday night, Mark, we had a brilliant game uh, in, in Newbridge. Actually, the, the renovated Newbridge, it looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, the ground looks class, the stand. Probably long overdue, Mark, an upgrade there in Newbridge. Like, but it, it definitely looks the part now. But Kula came to town. Uh, I see they chartered a, a train from Dublin to, to take their supporters down. There's very few clubs would have the capabilities to do that. But it shows you the world we're living in. But obviously, the two O'Callaghan's, Mark, Niall and, and, and Colin, one eight between them. Niall in particular, Mark, had a brilliant game. Uh, for Kula, Dara Kerwin was fantastic for 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 uh, for Nace as well. Paddy McDermott, another county man, brilliant, brilliant performance. Three points in play. Owen Doyle, a real stalwart of the game. But look, listen, it was always going to be. I actually felt that was going to be one of the games of the weekend. Mark, it certainly lived lived up to this expectations. Like, yeah, look, it was a brilliant game. And to be fair, look, you mentioned Niall O'Kerr, Callahan there probably wouldn't be as wouldn't be well known as the brother. But look, I, I do see. Funny enough, just noticed after the game. Austin O'Malley they tipped him for a Dublin call up again, and I know he was into a few Bourne Cup games, but he definitely, definitely will. But look, we talked about the scores. Like I think in this time of year, November two fifteen to one fifteen, the scores. Yeah. But to be fair, you mentioned Newbridge. The pitch looked absolutely immaculate. Atmosphere, yeah. everything looked brilliant. And to be fair, look, it just shows you a good fast pitch. We've got plenty of scores. And as you said, look, it actually was a brilliant game of football. And to be fair, in the whole, probably over the whole weekend, there's been a lot of good games of football. We're very quick to run our well, game this, down. This is the point make, you, Mark. That's the point that we're going to make about the, about the new rules, you know. And, and you're sort of thinking to yourself, like, is there is there much need for such an upheaval based on the fact that, you know, people, there, there's so much football out there. I know, look, it's a discussion for another day, but but I, I, I just feel some of the football over the weekend were brilliant. Like the, the Pierce's game, the way Pierce has played that first 15 minutes, Clan Iron Newman's a great game. Crosser Lock Kalku was a class game. And we're going to chat about those games later. But but Kula and Nace Mark had everything. It had everything. It had kick passing. It had good hard running. It had, you know, there was great kick out strategies. It was brilliant. Like it, 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 it direct play. Some of the direct ball from Kula and from Nace into their forwards was was absolutely outstanding. Really outstanding. Yeah, there was a hard run there for sure. But the thing about all them games is it's all knockout. Mm. Everything's knockout. And every ball is like contested where yeah. as if your heart life depends on it. Whereas maybe when you have the back door and we're playing the championship yeah. in the county or county yeah. with the safety net with two and three games and you're trying stuff out and there's not as much risk. Whereas like them, them all these games at the weekend, knockout, complete knockout, yeah. everything's on the line. Players are gonna do everything, give everything. Oh, there's that something, and then you're looking at it like that's what it says. We look at the games over the weekend. Is there really much wrong with the game? I know why I was at the Kilku yeah. game and sitting it, even though it would have been as high as scoring, but you're looking at a brilliant game of football, and you're going, Is there really much wrong with our game when it's played like this? And I do think a lot of it is maybe I'm not saying it's all inter county's fault, but there is is it the straight knockout? Maybe when it's a straight knockout, everything on the line, and when you see the games of the weekend, there's not very much wrong with our games. Yeah, and I suppose the other thing to consider as well, Mark, is that the teams that are playing each other are quite evenly matched as well, which obviously helps, you know, when you're not playing, you know, you look at maybe going to the Leinster Club, Champ or sorry, the Leinster Provincial Championship and maybe Dublin are playing, you know, just for talk's sake, a Wexford and Crow Park and yeah, you know, there's a golf in class physically, there's a golf in class from a, from a tactical point of view, like, and you know, and that's just, that's just, that's just the way it is, you know, Dublin, Kerry, all these I teams, do. teams, you know, they're, they're, they're ahead of the pack. Where club level, it seems to be that, that you know... Uh, I mean, top level, level the, I, we're, we're three tiers in top level. That's we're true. senior, we're intermediate and junior. And I don't. I know there's county teams. I do think it's only a matter of time before we go to three tiers yeah. in inter-county football. I do, but like a senior, mm-hmm. inter, it's only now. I know there's county managers right there. Yes, every county loves their shot at the big fish. Yes, but... But you don't want to be seeing hammering games, and I do think it's coming to the bit very, very in the next year or two years. We're going to see I think the new rules. I think the new rules is going to make the, the, the you know the, the rich richer, obviously, and the poorer poorer. I just think the new rules are going to suit teams of of serious physicality, conditioning. You yourself, me and you in this conversation before, like you mm. know, conditioning levels at the very highest level, Mark, are more or less borderline professional. Like let's be honest, like they're borderline uh, professional. It's massive, you know? but I noticed it even like I know when just noticed that being in with Claire. And leaving Clare to go to work, and the difference in Division Two and Division Three of conditioning level was off the charts. Mm-hmm. Now, and and there's a massive gulf then between Division Two and Division One, and like so, it is. It, yeah. It's massive, and I do think that the three tiers will come in into county football. I do believe very, very soon. And you see our club football. Or the reason we had a, such a brilliant weekend of football is you mentioned that all the teams are evenly matched, but it's that straight yeah. now. Everybody's going for. It. And and Mark, like you know, going back to that Cooley game, like one of the one of the standout features for me about that Cooley team, 
the, their their physicality, you know, the, the physical condition of them. And this is the thing I was talking to, to to Dan about this dance and legend about this dance. Obviously, worked in Dublin club for the last four years, and he was saying like the culture, if that culture has been in Dublin for years now, you know, a, a permanent S and C coach in every club, a games development officer in every club, like, and that's a massive advantage, Mark, from a development point of view. Kula, actually, the guy who's involved in Kula, oh, his name's gone out of my head. Daniel was telling me actually, Carlo man, he went. From Carlo to, to Kula, and he was in an S. He's been doing an S and C program with them for years. Like that structure's been put in place. Like this wasn't just a shock that Kula won this this year. This has been something they've been building to Mark. You know, from a gradual point of view, S and C nutrition, conditioning, like, and you can see the physique. Like they are well put together. Those men, like, really well put together. Like, yeah, you know, but if you see Kula, they're actually like they're actually so many clubs you know now are looking at quick fix and they're actually putting the chart in front of the horse whereas Kula have put the chart, got their S and C, got their structures right. And also like I know they're a big dual club. Like their dual hurlers have been their hurlers have been the focal point of their club the last five or six years. I did listen to Mike for someone just an interview after the beat Kill McCud and he says this year they did put a couple of the dual a couple of the dual players put their whole full weight behind the football this year and it made a massive massive difference to them too but like the but you said like physicality the condition of both teams and Nace like Nace must be sick of the look in a Dublin club because I think that's the fourth year in a row a Dublin club it would is. beat them it is and yeah it, uh, and they're Nace and when you look at Nace their team like they have serious <laughs> serious players and it's just they must just be sick to the sight of a Dublin club team, but look, it's Dublin club team at the minute. You see, yes, they're on oh, us, just not cool. Like you, you says, Dan said, every club has yeah. that culture, and that makes yeah. a big difference. And look, to be fair, we know up in Ulster, maybe in the big clubs, that would be in place too. But there's a lot of smaller clubs don't have the or just the I would say the, the resources to do that. Yeah, and I suppose, Mark, just staying in Leinster just quickly, like obviously games that we didn't see, but we will talk about them just briefly. Like RD, another impressive win. Uh, you know, I, I did say last week that I felt RD had the potential to win Leinster. Uh, I'm, I'm still going to stick with that. I think they're, I, I don't know if they'll be, I don't know if they'll beat Kula. I, I think Kula will beat Tullamore. Tullamore had a straightforward win over tonight. And then the other game, which weirdly is actually Tuesday night St. Lomans on a Tuesday night which is strange so that's on tomorrow night and that'll be interesting obviously Lomans play uh, Castletown and I would fancy Lomans strongly there yeah, Mark if Lomans you... will win it I think they play RD don't they and that Lomans would be already a... a good game in Pro Park that'll be a good that game in Pro Park that would be a ding dong yeah. f- that would be a that real ding dong and I think RD were in the semi-final last year wasn't it Kilmacud they were the they ran Kilmacud very close very, yeah very but close. Remember now. so look RD's there and, they're, and there's a lot you like Lom RD series you said seven or eight Loud County players with L- Lomans yeah. if they get over the Wexford which I expect them to do the six or seven Westmead County players and like it, they do yeah. a serious quality in any other game Kula and well look to be fair I think that was Tullamore's first victory it's something like 50 years yeah. in the professional championship. And yeah. you look at Tullamore, I think it's Brent and Egan in that play. So that was a big win for them. And they have that monkey on their back. But yeah. look, they would say they'd be up again it, but playing Kula. Yeah. Kula, obviously Kula, you know, will be, you'd be fancy Kula to come through that, that semi-final. But I suppose from RD's point of view, Mark, it's a bit like Urgell. When you, when you listen to Enda McGinley talking about having that sort of Ulster club experience, you know, Urgell had that Ulster club experience two years ago. And RD have now three campaigns in a row. So the first campaign they had, they got a win, you know, and then they were beaten. And then last year they got two wins. And, you know, that'll help them. And this year now the two wins under the belt, another two wins in Leinster. And you know yourself, the experience that that'll give a team mark is huge. Like, no, like massive. And if you look through all the results over the weekend, it's most of the teams who have that experience. Beat yeah. the first team, beat the first team, and it's a bit of the clan early again too, you know, beat the Newbridge yeah. that experience. That wee bit of experience of, yes, it's great when you're county championship and you do go over and do, and rightly so, you celebrate it. But when you win it two and three years, then you really turn your focus to the provincial championship. Yeah. And look, at RD now, like they're, I think there's a four to one, is it three or four to one? Like three in a row. Three in a row. Three in a row. Three in yeah. a row. And now they're now semi final. Look, RD probably need to take that step. They were beat last year in a semi final. I think they were beating two semi finals before. Yeah, I think so they, they yeah, probably right. they probably need to get that to show progress. Need to beat, and I, I know I don't want to be disrespect to the Wexford champions, but I still think it be St. Lomans, and they probably do need to be beaten Lomans to show progress. But on the other hand, Lomans will be thinking the same. Yeah, no, completely agree with you. You just talked in Clan Iron there. We'll move on Ulster, uh, Clan Iron Newbridge Mark yesterday. Um, you know, very tight and tense. I thought it was a good game. I thought it was a really good game. You know, people look at Tiernan Kelly, Barry McCambridge. You know, Turbo. I thought Jack Conlon was brilliant yesterday. Four points in play. Thought he had a really good game. 
Played them a couple of times this year, Mark. Very impressed with their athleticism. Uh, Owen Mulholland, the goalkeeper, normally plays out the field in the league. He played out the field in, in all their league games this year, believe it or not, and then moved into goals uh, for, for the championship. But just interesting, like both goalkeepers, like you know, who like to come out the field. James Gribben, obviously, of, of Newbridge, like to do the same as well. And just want your opinion on that. Like, is the goalkeeper, like the four provincial winners last year, Mark, the four provincial winners last year Love. and the All Ireland champions all had a stay at home goalkeeper. And I'm just wondering the new rules, is there going to be a lot of goalkeepers that are going to get caught out now? Because it just seems to be like Niall Morgan, it's okay looking at Niall Morgan, but in my opinion, Morgan is, you know, he's a sensation at playing out the field. You know, he's Morgan could probably play into county football out the field, but not all goalkeepers. Well, he does do play, that. he does play full four for Eden Dork. Um, and midfield, and he, yeah, midfield yeah, full yeah, four. I, I, I do think before he I do believe before he went to goal for throwing he actually he went Siles for thrown out as an out the field player. Yeah. But the yeah. goalkeeper, she's made a good point there. To be fair, and look, I'm in the flip. I still think I'm a great believer in it. <laughs> and a goalkeeper that's out the field. Fifteen. If you can attack with 15, 14, find it very hard to defend with fifteen. I know I'm skipping on, but if you look at the car fin game, you know, the goal goalkeeper was caught in the press and the kick out, and Pierce yeah. was able to run the ball in for a second goal. But in the clan earn and Newbridge, like to be fair, both goalkeepers. And I know from watching Newbridge a lot this year, and no, he didn't. He just wasn't as adventurous. Yes, I've seen him. James Gribben and got coming out like nearly every single attack and making it really, really hard for teams to defend again. Now, to be fair, I thought Mahon and Gold for Clan Earn was really, really good. But I, I am still in the opinion if when you're attacking, it's better to attack with 15 if you can do that. Now, yes, that's, well, that's year, a serious next risk. Year be, look, next year, look, be 12 and 11, won't it? Next yeah, year, be 12 and, and, I, and 11. I, and that's where I'm worried about the rules. Like, we're talking about this here, Peggy in the middle. Should every team now, if you have a goalkeeper that can play out, well, I put it this way. I wouldn't be again next year playing a forward in goals. Yeah. And uh, yeah. taking the risk and go, we're going to go. Every time we attack, you get up and make 12 v 11 because you're still going to have a piggy yeah. in the middle. I, I, was thinking, I was thinking of these things, you know, I know we're talking about the club football, like, but it is something that, that came up yesterday as the goalkeeper and the conversation came up then about Donegal. You know, Sean Patton can't really play that role. So what did Donegal do with him? You know, do, do they put Michael Murphy in goals? Look, it's not. I, mean, you know, I, I, I just think there's going to be a load. A lot of stuff for managers and coaches and management teams to mull over the next eight or nine weeks when the rules, and and that's where I'm just wondering. Right, I get it, the rules, and I, I don't see much wrong with game, but why invent, why throw six different rule changes in all of a sudden? Maybe yeah. just go right, we'll go with the three up and let it sit at that instead of let's go goalkeeper twelve v eleven because it is going. I think it's going to cause havoc for defenses like yeah. twelve v eleven. And, and where yeah. they leg it or not, you're going to create that pig in the middle. Put it this way, you're over a team, you're over Leitham, Leitham's winning a game in the last two or three minutes, you're going to keep ball. Yeah. Leitham's up, you're going to keep ball up the 45, bring a goalkeeper up, use your four up, we're going to keep ball up in that half, try and prevent, and out of contact, give go, give go, stay out of contact, because if you do it right, you will stay, unless the other team pull their goalkeeper out, then you have a chance of creating yeah. A chance. Yeah. I just, I just, I don't like the twelve v eleven. That's I, mm. I just, I think it's hard enough for defenders, and I, I see their point. But twelve v eleven, you're actually now taking the piggy out in the middle. You're taking that advantage from the defense, but you're putting it up the field. But you're still giving teams the opportunity yeah. to play with that. I think later, later in the year, when things, when there's something at stake, you'll see that. You know. But going back to the game, Mark, you know, Tiernan Kelly, a real heartbeat for for Clan Iron by a real. Like he kicked a monster score, made a fantastic one-handed block as well. I know a couple of his tackles were probably borderline. He was, he was the, block, the, the one, the block he made was brilliant. But you never, I thought Conor McCombe yeah. was brilliant too in the middle of the field for Clanner. Yeah. Had a really, yeah. really brilliant. good game. Yeah. Now Newbridge, and, uh, there's one, there's one thing about New, Newbridge are late and pacey, and I do think whenever Clanner went after the kick out and forced them out long, yeah, Clanner definitely had a miracle advantage physicality. Yeah. But look, it was like, again a great. You look at the first twenty-five minutes. Some of the score taken was brilliant. Outside, yeah. like some of the scores were kicking. Well, it's a big win. It's a big win for Clanner to go to to go to Celtic Park, beat the Derry champions who had beaten the All Ireland champions. You know, it's a significant win for them, and it'll give Clanner serious, serious uh, uh, hope going into the semi-final against Ergel Kier. Now, I do feel that Ergel Kier might have a wee bit too much for them, uh, but it certainly gives them a lot of confidence. I know Justy Justy Lynch down man is is helping with Ergel. Justy's actually living in Longstone, I think, Mark, with, uh, your, your own parish. Like, but uh, Rory Lavery, delighted for Rory as well. Rory's a, a big clan iron man, a uh, good club man. He's been there a few years, so delighted for them. Like, and you know what? They'll they'll give they'll give Urigal their fill of it, Donny. They'll give Urigal their yeah, fill of it. Yeah, they will, but you would still look, they'll give it and they'll take serious, serious comments out of that. And I actually think it's the first time since 2019 a dairy team has been knocked out 
in the first round of Ulster. Maher felt were knocked out by Kilcoo in 2019. So it's the Five first years. time a Derry team had been knocked out in the first round. And I think, yeah. yeah, and I think from that has even taken them back to that. But look, that's a massive win It's been a long time as well since an Armagh club team had a good run. So, you know, going back, obviously, to Cross yeah. for them. Yeah, Cross for beat by Trillick last cross. year. I'd say the Crosses, I mean, when they lost yeah. to yourselves, Bally Bay, they were beat by Bally Bay well. Yourself was over Bally Bay at the time. And then they were beaten by Trillick comfortably last year. So probably the first time in about four or five years at least that, a, that an Armagh club team had a significant result. You know? Yeah, and as Ma and a serious confidence, you think Armagh win the Larn and Barry McKeon. Like I do Holy think it was a massive move yesterday for Clan Iron. Connor Doherty kicked the last point before half time, and then he kicked the first point to start the second half to bring it back to a point. He was starting to have a massive influence in the game, and I like yeah, right away Clan Iron moved Cambridge on him, and he completely yeah. nullified him. Yeah, completely, and it was a ma- yeah. it was a it was a big big change yeah. in the game. Because Connor Doherty had sort of just you felt Newbridge were starting to get a grip, but once he made that move, it was massive. But look, you mentioned Clan Earn, Eric again, brilliant game. But Clan Earn will take serious serious confidence, especially yeah. going to Celtic Park and winning. You know yourself, going to provincial is all right. Winning a provincial game is brilliant, but if you go away oh, and win a provincial game, that's massive. It's yeah, the massive. Home bus and the buzz and the atmosphere, you're thinking. Yeah. Two good weeks now and training's great. But listen, staying in Ulster, uh, everyone was expecting a, a straightforward Kilku win, but it, it certainly wasn't straightforward. Uh, they had a they had a call on on thirty nine year old down manager Conor Laverty to come off the bench and, and rescue them. Uh, you know, La- Laverty was always a good footballer, Donny, very intelligent player, very smart player. Uh, I did feel probably you know it was getting towards the, the end for him, you know, career wise. But he came on with twenty minutes to go and he had a big influence on the game. But listen, hats off to your old mate Archie there. He's over across their lock and. Him and Ryan Daly had them well set up. And, and Mark, like they played 30 minutes of that game with 14 men. Barry Cassidy wrongly sent James Smith off, who actually hadn't been booked and had and, and had been had been booked again then for a second offence that he hadn't committed. And you just wonder to yourself, like, Cross or not could have sprung a major surprise if they had kept those men in the field. They really could have. Yeah, they'd be f- I would say Cross or not in the day are full of regrets. I don't get around. Yeah. We, I, I expected a straightforward Kilku win, but I think Cross and Arthur like, yeah. yeah, yeah, the discipline probably just a wee bit. Yes, you mentioned Black like, yeah. but even in the first half, I thought they gave a couple of cheap frees away, lazy, and they were very well set up. Forty or nine yeah. minutes, I you was really game, impressed. You were at the game. Yeah, how to defend yeah. it today? They were compact, but I thought they just. Maybe over eagerness sometimes, a lazy mm-hmm. hand, just an over eagerness, even at times a two and three men surrounding the two men that surrounding the ball carrier. And all they had to do was stand up, armed it, and then somebody just, but maybe a bit over eagerness, a big hand in the shoulder, and it was easy. They just gave Kilku a couple of easy frees in the first half, and I think it got Kilku settled into the game. But like, and then that Jim, the Smiths, the Army, even the Army feet, he getting the black card, and the game was yeah. a draw, and he was he kicked the point before that, and it was just there were big, massive, massive moments. But I think Cross and Long will really look back today and think, Jesus, what, what a chance there! We really did have a chance, and I don't get me wrong, it was a perfect way to win the game for them because everybody had talked Kuku up, everybody had written Cross and Long, and the fact that the Cavan champions had such a bad. Bad record, and also, but you mentioned we mentioned the goalkeepers, Shane McManus and goals for Cross and Locker, and I thought was best player in the field. He yeah. was absolutely brilliant. Now, I don't know if he's a state or if he's been doing goals all year, but again, as this year, Kilku found it very hard to defend when he came and at some times they were actually a man down. He he came out the field leaving it up, but even when they'd full quote in the field, Kilku found it very, very hard to defend. 15, you know, defend the 15 yeah. mate with 14 because Nile Keane is both ways a stay at home goalkeeper. But I he thought, she, but again, brilliant game. Like, hey, you're what more do you want? Like, all right, mate, like it was 15 to 113 or 110. But the ta- every ball was thought for an intensity of the charge. Yeah. Everything was, it was just a brilliant game. And to be fair, like what you mentioned, Connor there, Connor actually came on and rescued him. The first ball he got, he made a brilliant cross feed ball past the PD. Got one of three, and then it was just even a slight come back. Like points, he was going back, yep, yeah, and he was going back himself. And the outside of the foot score, he kicked, but he was going back himself inside that 21 30 and getting on ball, dictating the play, giving ball, and just simple, just that football IQ, knowing do the right thing here. And look, and I mentioned it loudly. Like, and I know this, like, Kilku wouldn't have lost a game last year if they had kept him in the field. They took him half, yeah, it's minutes it's left against Scott's team. I was actually going to say that to you, like, look, from a coaching perspective. You know, from a coach's perspective, like obviously he's got a, he's got a, he's got a, he's got a, a decent football IQ. You know, from a coach's perspective, so when he's coming onto the field, he can nearly coach them through that last fifteen minutes. You know, and that's for yeah, some of those sitting there you know? for 
he's sitting there for the first 35 and he's able to sit and just watch maybe there's a wee nugget there maybe there's an opening there there's an opening there and first, first, he wasn't in the field 30 seconds and the cross field ball he gave PD score simple yeah. score then like as I said he won a free and then he kicked the outside of the foot so it was he had a massive massive impact it was, the it game. Was last, Tony, Tony it was this time last year their game management let them down against Scottsdale it was really game management that was all it was you know it was yeah, just, game management, just but the game I, one, the game yeah one. but I would say Kilku and Carl Lace and Kilku are absolutely delighted today because look that's our first game in four weeks and we talked about this they don't get hit they haven't been tested down at all no, they wouldn't have no. got hit the way across the lock and they wouldn't have faced anything like across the lock even it's James Trent explained this I was, I was explaining this to someone yesterday. We were chatting about this, like, and they were asking about how good Kilku were. And, and I sort of said, like, it is actually hard for them because, you know, the Down Club Championship this year, Mark, to be honest with you, I thought it was one of the worst championships I've yeah, seen. Yeah, no, a and Kilku did. Long. And Kilku people, it's like, Kilku players, I know they wouldn't say it out loud, like, but you're, well, I've seen them a couple of times in the Down Champ. They haven't got out of third year. Whereas last year, again, they cantered through the Down Championship, went into Derry Gunley, hammered Derry Gunley, learnt nothing. I yeah. see one test at the end of the Scotstown. Yes, they should have beat Scotstown their game up, but lost. But I think today they will actually be delighted. They want the win. They got a serious test, physicality, intensity, everything they wanted, and they got the win. And they've now two weeks to sit and well, Mark, look at the Scotstown in, in, in the Andy Merrigan, obviously, Cup, obviously, which is a long way away yet. Like, but where are they in the rec? And you reckon that they could win the All Ireland? I'm going to say, I don't, I wouldn't say, I, I do think they could win Ulster. Mm. Now, and I'm, I'm going to say, do I think they're as good as they were four years ago that won the line? Not yet. I still think they haven't replaced. They're, look, they, they're still, when you look at their team, yes, Callum Rogers has come in, but there's not a big injection of more Anthony Morgan. Yes, has come in, but from four years ago, do I think, like four years ago, yeah, four years ago, I said before the ball was kicked, like that day they beat Lane Athletic Grounds, I said, even before, they were the best team in Ireland. At that mm-hmm. point, they were. Uh, if you ask me that now, do I think they're the best team in Ireland at the minute? No, I don't. Do you I think, actually more, do you not think? Do you not think it's one of the most wide open all Ireland? Wide clubs? open, and any, but any, but but I do fancy them. They're still my tip to win Ulster, even though mm-hmm. Eric or Clan Earn. I still think last year that twelve they hurt it last year badly again. Scott saying the one thing Kilku have over everybody is our work rate, like the way what's when the story, they, what's the story about Aaron Brannigan? I don't know. I, I he was due well, to start. I, I think I think if they're going to win Ulster, boss, I think they're going to need him. Oh no, they're, they're going to need. need they're going to need. They're going to need him. And, and look, he was stripped out and all, but didn't start. Yeah. Now to be fair, that was Ryan Johnson's first game. I think since the set, like Ryan has missed nearly three months, so it was probably yeah. a big, big boost getting the full. You would have, you would have Aaron Branning and earmarked the mark one of the Canamans, of course. Like yeah, if, if, it that, that, if it came to that, if it came to that, of course, there's a lot and, of football. And there's some role. Yes, they was. I thought before the game, I says Dabs will obviously pick Darren McVitie up, and it just shows you the thrust Carl Lacey has now in Callum Rogers. It was actually Callum Rogers was designated to go and pick Darren that's McVitie one, up. That's one thing about them, and people probably don't appreciate it, like is their flexibility. Like Doc, you know, Keelan Doherty can go back and do a role like that. You know, he can. Yeah, and I, I thought, I actually player. thought that yeah. I didn't think it should. Keelan Doherty lined out a corner for Darren, and I didn't think it should it. Kilku yeah. or Keelan, I think Keelan was better. Kilku's better when we do have coming. Coming from yeah. deep and driving. And, and look, that's yeah. but just yes, sir. Like a cool name a team. And bar Niall Brannigan at corner back, you couldn't, and maybe Jerome at full forward, Pete, you couldn't tell where the rest was going to line it. Like Ryan McAvoy did line it at full back the other day because James Smith went to full forward. But I'm yeah. like Ryan easy can go to midfield. I've seen this year Ryan going to full forward. So their yeah. flexibility, it is the flexibility just... huge boss, yeah, definitely. You know, and Eugene Brannigan can play cornerback, wing back, midfield, mm. wing, forward. wing half forward, and that is but look, I think Kilku will be delighted where they're at now because they got the test. They're in the next round, the last four. And I do think they, they will take my... Ma- and it, you, we talk about experience. This is now the 12th year. And you know, a lot of these boys have a lines in their back pocket. They have two Ulster titles. Yeah. And that experience is key. And make no mistake, Kilku's whole season is geared towards this Ulster club because they do know... Very, know that in a minute, very, classy, know- very classy. They got a bit of heat at the game, I suppose, you know, for... for- I think across a lot maybe felt very, very hard done by, uh, you know, and it's sort of the referee's job is not going to get any easier with the new rules either. Like, it's no, not... and that's the thing we tell about, like a referee's no. job at the minute is it's absolutely hard. hard, but what's it going to be like now? A lot more oh. rules than this. Oh. Shouldn't I say they are solo and go ref? Two men, that maybe one man steps over the halfway line and he's yep. got his back. Is that check? I, I just, I actually think it's an impossible yeah. job now for referee. And somebody mentioned but, the other day about maybe bring, and this is, I hear somebody talking this in the radio, I think it might be the Matt Cooper show. Is it maybe it was Mark O'Shea or something? Is it now getting the point inter county referee need to be professional? 
Well, and two are professional brought in. Yeah. Yes, because one thing that you look at the way Paul Farin refereed the Clanner, and I actually think Paul Farin's the best referee in Ulster at the Paul's minute. You look at him and Sean Harrison, brilliant referees. But you look at the way Paul refereed our Newbridge and Clanner, and then you look at Barry Cassidy, the way he read the completely different two, two, styles. The of the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. It's completely different styles. And I look at, yeah. and I'm not, I wouldn't referee for love. Loving their money, I wouldn't do it because I wouldn't. I just, uh, I actually think it's the most difficult job in our football at the minute. Yeah, well, Mark, and then get into a team obviously you'll get players you get familiar with next year. Podrick Pierce is obviously Cora Finn. I, I fancy Pierce's in it. I don't know why Cora Finn, there was a massive, massive, you know, real momentum behind Cora Finn, and everyone's picking up Cora Finn and talking about Cora Finn. Like, People have no idea how well organised, how aggressive, how tenacious Podrick Pierce's are. Pierce has knocked the bridges out of the championship this year and, and, and worthy winners. And to be honest with you, like I didn't think they probably got enough respect getting into this game. Um, and I thought Niall Daly, Connor Daly, I thought were brilliant. Uh, you know, to, the, the, the Dalys are real warriors. I uh, have been for a number of years for Club and County. Davy Murray, you know, uh, I think Davy might have retired mid the county. I'm not sure, but Davy, a great character as well. Great fella. He had a brilliant game as well. Uh, Paul Kerry chipped in with one four. I thought he had a fantastic game, Mark. Uh, Owen Collar as yep. well, not three. One four and cleared a ball off the goal lane. Yes, yes. And do you know what, Mark? I thought it was just a prime example of a team coming in like Cora Finn, maybe just a wee bit, just a touch. Maybe there's a touch of sort of maybe complacency. I don't know. But Pierce has come out with a serious aggression, a serious edge. And that start, Mark, was the foundations for the win for them. It was the yeah, but for Cora, Cora Finn actually carried all right to kick their first two points. But I think a lot points. of people tuned tu- tu- yeah. in. Maybe they tuned me also and tuned Cora Finn haven't lost a game here. But I looked at Cora Finn yeah. and I watched him again my calling the thing. And I'm not saying they have a lot of aging players, I would still say a lot but, of. But, but, that's why I thought, Mark, you know, I know Cora Finn have an identity in the way they like to play football. But early in the game, you could see them, they were man to man. They were man to man everywhere. Yeah. And I was thinking. This is, a, this is a high risk game for a team maybe that's not blessed with, as you say, a manic amount of pace, you know, at, no, at, at the stage of their career. And you're sort of thinking, dangerous game. Like, and they were caught early. They were really caught early. No, and Piers went at them. But you look at Piers this evening, it was a turnover up the pitch. That work ethic, the turnover, they were aggressive. And I actually thought, like, some of Conor Daly's kick passing yesterday was unbelievable. The first half is kick passing. Yeah, was Connor, good. Connor, thought, Connor can play ball. He, he, he um, can mix it. He can mix yeah, it. He can play ball. He, like I just thought everything Pierce's did, they were a great they could mix it up, they could kick it, they could run it, they were aggressive, they went after Cora Finn when they smell a chance here we'll go after two V ones they were setting traps. Like the Nile Daily playing is that plus one, they were setting traps. I thought and maybe like you mentioned because Ku won the line and I'm looking at Pierce's going, yeah. See, geez, yeah. like, I, I know they won't look ahead. I'm looking at Pierce's going, like St. Bridges were a kick of a ball away from winning the line last year. The peers were knocked them out, and I just looked at Pierce as yes, they seem to have everything the physicality, the pace, they can slow it down, they can defend really well, they're happy to go. Like, the most thing that impressed me yesterday was Pierce's how good they were without the ball. Like, there's eight or nine minutes spent through the yeah. second half, and they were happy. Corvin yeah. had the ball, but they were happy, right? Common hurtless, and they couldn't no, break they're, them they're down. They're well organized, money. they're well organized, really? and, they're hard to break and, and I was just looking at them going, you know, so they could they could go deep, even though they're not going no, to. I they would say, be a, I would say they'll not be too far away. They'll not be too far away. They, they go to they go to Leitrim champions and, next week, and, and, and that's more, more, more of a lot of good players, a lot of really good players. And it's in it's in Baltimore, it's in Leitrim, a tight ground. And it, it, you know you, you never know, you never know because Moa did run. Uh, you know the 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 the, the Connacht championship last year. They were very very close last year. The the, the round court have been very close. Like and uh, it's, it's a big you know, seven day turnaround. A big and an Ulster hard. club. Yeah. It's a big because you're in a high, no doubt. Pierce's yeah. were in a massive high yesterday yeah. and even last night. Yeah. And I experienced this with Bally Bay when cross my then. We be at cross had to play Bally had to play Kilku a week later. And I know boys are up here and it's it's very hard to get boys down. Yeah. To get them back up seven days, and that will be Pierce's biggest worry, I feel, this weekend. But look, we're talking about, I just was really, really impressed with them yesterday. And like Paul Cherry won four, but it was a brilliant goal. But 60 seconds after he scored a goal, he's at the other end of the field, clearing a ball out of his lane. And yeah. I just love their work. Uh, it's a big moment, uh, that. Every, a big moment that actually. Yeah, big moment. And they're, they're just a team. Every, when they have the ball, everybody defends. Everybody works hard. When they have the ball, everybody goes in tax. And look, I was disappointed with Corf. Just after, as you said, I think Corf people got carried away with Corf in of eight, nine years ago. Maybe the name, the name. 
and the tradition yeah. and yeah. it was probably yeah. a, look it was probably an ambush set up perfectly for piercers it was probably yeah. just set lovely we're going in the gym everybody's talking yeah. paraffin up and this here this is brilliant and when we went in here and I thought piercers did everything a grass and just stuck they're just like a team couldn't wait to piercers get will not be far away piercers will not be far away yeah, from I, they'll not be far I away. went down to the hay two weeks ago and watched them playing Roscommon Gales in the Finally, I know for 40 minutes, I was really impressed. But the, the thing that impressed me most was Scumming Gale's got a run on them. And Pierce is in the last two or three minutes, kept the ball for about two or three yeah. minutes. Or Scumming Gale couldn't get the ball. Good. And it was a day just, yeah. but kept it up in the far 30, not in front of their own goal. We're happy to keep ball. And it was just, that's the thing that impressed me. But look, they will really, really fancy their chances. And yeah. they will have a big, they go deep. Yeah, we're talking of names, talking about big names. Just finally finishing the Munster Championship. Obviously, Dr. Croaks, another big win there, 115 and 180 against Castle Havert. I suppose the first thing you think of when you think of Dr. Croaks, you think of the Gooch and you think of, you know, some of the players that Dr. Croaks have produced in the past, or you know, some of the best footballers yeah. that have played the game. Is this a is this a return to to the golden days for, for Croaks? Yeah, well, you'd have to say, look, you still look, there's still their big name, the Gavin White, they have Tom, the Tony Brosnan kicked one seven. I think Michael Bourne yeah. deserves so they'll be they'll be hoping that, like Shane Murphy and goals, but Tony Brosnan won seven in a provincial yeah. championship. Now, I do think there was only three in it, and Brian Hurley got a straight red. I know yeah. Castle Haven did line out without Damien Cahillane. That would Cahillane was a big, big blow for them, but look, Dr. Croaks are sitting now, and again. They're everybody's favourite, but I know I mentioned it last week. I wouldn't rule out Earl. Can <laughs> Earl got over the line yesterday? And they beat it there yesterday. Yeah, two yeah, they beat it there, and I think yeah. they, they now have a semi final, and the winners play Doctor Crow. But it's just Earl again that experience. They've been here. This is there's a lot of times. But just when I look at the Earl team on paper, they have a lot of good players, and they yeah. won't fear Doctor Crow. But obviously Doctor Crow, that was a massive win, like one fifteen to one eight. Now, I do know Brian yeah. Hurley got a red card. It was 111 to 18. Yeah, I don't think Captain Haver never game. scored. They never scored a game once Brian Hurley gets sent off for 20 minutes left. But look, when you look at Dr. Croaks, Gavin White, and obviously Michael Bourne's name, but that's Tony Bros and 1 7. That's massive. That's a massive, massive return. And Tony Bros is a boy who probably hasn't done it. Or Kerry has been talked up and talked up, but like he's still like when you see yeah. when you have a man taking on one seven in a provincial championship, it just, it's serious, serious class. But like this Dr. Croaks will definitely be fancied to win the monster title. There will be so no doubt, Mark, over the next few weeks, there's gonna be some brilliant, brilliant games of football played. Uh, I'm really looking forward now. We'll we'll be back in a couple of weeks, I'm sure, to to, to sort of to, to analyze and, and review uh the semi finals. And by that stage, Mark, we know exactly where the, the four provincial finals will be, which will be brilliant, you know. Um finally, just before we finish, obviously we talked about them last week. The the, the great Barcelona Gales exit the yeah. Leicester Junior Championship on Saturday. <laughs> Uh, Kel Calvin beat them one nine to not eleven. But look, I'm sure again the experience of of having played a couple of games in the, in the Leinster Club Championship will have helped the promotion and the development of Gaelic games there in in, in Barcelona. But listen, Mark, thanks a million, boy, for coming on again and uh, some great insights. And we'll see you in a few weeks. Good man. No, no more. Thank you, Stevie. Bye bye.